Thanks for staying with us. Now this borders on the community outreach by NYSC. The National Youth Service Corps was on a seven-day free medical outreach in hard-to-reach communities of Adamawa State. The project was aimed at thousands of people across the 21 local governments of the state. Here is the report. Hundreds of people are gathered here for the flagging off of the National Youth Service Corps week-long free medical outreach. This is timely to the people of Jire local government area of Adamo State, particularly the vulnerable and elderly people who cannot afford such services. The state coordinator of the NYSC in Adamo State says it's a part of the social responsibility of the Corps aimed at making host communities better. The National Youth Service Corps has since inception recorded numerous landmark achievements in the area of national unity and integration as well as other species such as healthcare delivery, rural infrastructures, mass literacy, education, sports and other social services. The state coordinator of NYC is encouraging all benefiting communities to troop out for the exercise. To expand the scope of the heart and make it more in fact, I wish to appeal for the support of corporate bodies and well-to-do individuals toward actualizing our plan for setting off mobile clinics for wider outreach. From the National Directorate Headquarters of the NYSC, I've been assigned here to monitor the 2021 Health Initiative for Rural Dwellers in Adamawa State. A member of the host community expresses appreciation to the NYC authority. What I have to say is thank you. You know, whatever you find in the world, if you get it very easily like this, you will be very happy. As we, the elders, anything at all come to us, we should take it to our people. So to benefit everybody. Adamawa State is lacking medical personnel in its hospitals, with less than 200 doctors rendering services to over 4 million people. The initiative by the NYSC is meant to help in partly filling the huge gap. Well, good gestures, I must say, as this will go a long way in improving health care delivery in the state. To sanitation now, use of toilets and clean Nigeria. As a way of informing the public and end the menace of open defecation, the Lagos State Government Office of Civic uh, Engagement has sensitized the public on a campaign against open defecation. Destiny Momo has more. Open defecation in Nigeria is a big issue, with the United Nations and World Health Organization reporting in 2019 that 47 million Nigerians are involved in the practice, that is one in four Nigerians. Lagos, Nigeria's largest state by population, is feeling the heat of the practice. That is one of the reasons for this event at Ajeremi Ifelodun Local Council Secretariat. Traditional rulers are well represented as they are needed to drive home the message to their communities. The special advisor to the Lagos State Governor on Civic Engagement, Princess Adebowale, says a mass campaign will begin soon. In Lagos State, you'll be going on the streets and you will see men and women openly defecating on the road, on our streets, on our waters. I think it's something that we should start a massive campaign against. And it's not just the government. All of us as citizens of Lagos State should campaign against open defecation in Lagos State. Right now, we don't want to start enforcement on open defecation. We want to actually use each other use the citizens as peers, as ambassadors, as our campaign managers. Like, you know what is going on in your street, you know what is going on in your community, you be the mouthpiece of the government. The local council chairman of Jeremy Ifelodun Fatai Ayola says the traffic situation in Lagos is making the issue tough as commuters spend a lot of time on the road. He says public toilets will be built along major roads. A number of people could not get to their destination on, on time and therefore they had to stop by and do you know, what the needful on the road, which is quite unfortunate. But we must also tell 
some of us the home truth. Part of us, some of us who are part of the government, we should do more on mobile toilets and we should also do more on cameras. The state government intends to use the campaign to reduce airborne and waterborne diseases and to enhance environmental sanitation. Destiny Momo for Plus TV Africa. Well, there are concerns that without proper sanitation facilities, Nigerians might have no option but to defecate in open and unsafe places, leading to various health hazards and safety problems. And on rounding up this week's package is worth a report on widowhood. Now, losing your partner can never be an easy thing for anyone, but for a woman, the hardship that comes with it can be traumatic. International Widows Day is commemorated by the United Nations to create awareness about the situation of widows across many parts of the world. This year's International Widow Day themed Invisible Women, Invisible Problems tends to highlight the fact that for many societies, a woman's identity is attached to her partner and after his death, the problems faced by her are ignored by policy makers who do not give any special attention to widows. In keeping with this, the Widows and Orphans Support Society has drawn the attention of Nigerians to carry this set of people along in their daily living. For many women around the world, widowhood is a devastating loss which is magnified by a long-term struggle for basic needs, human rights and dignity. They may be denied inheritance rights to what they relied on for livelihood or evicted from their homes, fast into unwanted marriages or traumatizing rituals. In commemoration of this day, this group says it is time to celebrate widows and encourage them to work harder. Convener of the group, Dr. Tayo Thomas and his partner, speaks more on widows' plight. Our biggest objective is to take the widows, the African widows, out of poverty and take, take them to a stage where they will be a blessing to other widows. Today we want to encourage our women not to be discouraged in respect of what they are facing and to make use of what they have learned both in the past and what they will learn today to establish themselves and become women of substance. With their theme thriving in hard times and to show more support on behalf of the United Nations, the group did not relent in awarding some deserving individuals who have shown passion for humanitarian services. God orchestrated it. I'm a lover of widows and orphans. I like in any little way I can to be a blessing to the, those set of people. For me, that's part of me to give. And uh, I'm part of such group uh, in most places. May God give every leader in Nigeria the heart to give to the ordinary person in the society. Some of the widows share some of their experiences. So since two years I lost my husband. So since then, nobody to take care of my, my children. I have six, six children. I have four children. It's God that be taking care of me. My children, I don't see anybody, no family, no anybody, but God is with me. I've been a widow for about 15 years. When I lost my husband, um, the people from the village, they sent um, some people, some delegates to come to my house to view what we had to collect what they could collect. International Widows Day works to encourage action in achieving full rights for widows, highlighting the need for more research and statistics into violence, discrimination and poverty suffered by widows, and develop policies and programs to address the problem. Destin Momo for Plus TV Africa. Now, according to the United Nations estimates, there are around 258 million widows around the world and nearly one in every 10 widows lives in extreme poverty. The COVID-19 pandemic has also added to this problem in many parts as people lose their partners to this deadly virus. And that's all we have for you in this week's uh, Plus Report. But before we go, let's to remind you to follow us at Plus TV Africa on Facebook and Instagram. And to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. 
I'm Jacinta Ubiugo. Thanks for watching.